It's time now for the Wednesday, October the 18th, 2023 Mule Train News brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Church service for Norris Leroy Conklin, 83 of Mule Shoe, is set for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, Thursday, October the 19th at the First Baptist Church in Mule Shoe with Les Griffin of Plainview officiating. Burial will follow in the Mule Shoe Memorial Park. Norris died Friday, October the 13th in Clovis. He was born April the 16th, 1940 in Clovis to Fonza Norris and Mildred Disney Conklin. He married Becky Mason in Muleshoe on October the 15th, 1967. Norris served as a pilot in the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War. His military career spanned 20 years, retiring at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. He was a C-141 pilot and flew many missions in and out of Vietnam, as well as transport missions all over the world. Of special significance is the role Norris played during development and test programs for the C-141 cockpit procedures trainer. It is appropriate to recognize that he was the sole focal point for this program since its inception and the only service member among Aerospace Systems Division, HQ, MAC, or Altus AFB personnel who was continually involved during the entire development and testing phases. Norris later received his master's degree from Eastern New Mexico University. After his career in the military, Norris farmed in the Muleshoe community. He was a member of the First Baptist Church. Here in Muleshoe, he served as a deacon. Norris was also on the board of directors for Five Area Telephone Cooperative and treasurer for the Muleshoe Heritage Center for several years. He loved the Lord, his country, his his family and he loved farming and ranching. He is preceded in death by his parents. Norris is survived by his wife Becky, his son Norris Mason Conklin, and his wife Jessica of Ball Ground, Georgia, his daughter Kelly K. Heidel, and her husband Mark of Iowa City, Iowa, his sister Kay Hagler of Clovis, his brother Garland Conklin, and his wife Lori of Muleshoe, his three grandchildren Cora May Conklin, Lee Grace Conklin, and Mia Ruth Conklin and eight nieces and nephews who meant so much to him also survive him as well. The family suggests memorials be sent to the First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 483, Muleshoe, Texas 79347, or G Gentive Hospice 2708, North Prince, Clovis, New Mexico 88101. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com. Please keep Becky and the entire family of Norris Conklin on your prayer list today he will be missed he was a great man and repeating his funeral services are scheduled for 11 o'clock thursday morning tomorrow october the 19th at the first baptist church with les griffin of plainview officiating barrel will be in the muleshoe memorial park Church service for Marcus Arizola Castillo, 75, of San Angelo, was held last week on Thursday, October the 12th at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church here in Muleshoe with Deacon Bobby Porras of Big Spring officiating. Burial was in the Bailey County Cemetery. Marcus died on Saturday, October the 7th in San Angelo. He was born November the 22nd, 1947 in Taft, Texas, to Ysidro and Amelia Arizola Castillo Sr. He married Patricia Rogers and Muleshoe on May 17, 1967. Marcus owned and operated his own repair business, tractor and automotive service, and was a master tractor mechanic. He loved to fish and attend several bass tournaments, even winning many awards. Marcos was an avid Pittsburgh Steelers fan. He enjoyed music, especially Ramon Ayala, and played the guitar. Family was the center of Marcus's life, and he liked to barbecue brisket for them. He was a faithful religious man, prayed daily, and was a member of the Knights of Columbus. Marcos was a member of St. Joseph's Catholic Church in San Angelo. He is preceded in death by his wife, Patricia, his parents, five sisters, Maria Garcia, Gloria Castarina, Ophelia Castillo, Adelia Leal, and Dolores Ontiveros, and a brother, Mario Castillo. Marcus is survived by his special friend, 
Trini Queller of of San Angelo, a son, Mark Wayne Costillo and his wife Deanne of San Angelo. Four daughters, Melanie Luna of San Angelo, Lisa Diane uh, Pettin of San Angelo, Stephanie Nicole Castillo of San Angelo, and Yvette Renee Castillo of Kyle. Five sisters survive him. Anita Flores of Muleshoe, Louisa Porras and her husband Joe of Big Spring, Valentina Valentia Costillo of Muleshoe, Margarita Villarreal and her husband Hector of Abilene, Alicia Gutierrez of Colleen, three brothers Isidro Castillo Jr. and his wife Angel of Amarillo, Joe Costillo and his wife Dahlia of Anton, Gilbert Costillo and his wife Patricia of Lubbock, 11 grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren all survive in the family suggests memorials be sent to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, 3610 22nd Street, Lubbock, Texas, 79410. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com on their website. Please keep the family of Marcos Arizola Castillo, 75, of San Angelo. His funeral services were held last week here in Mule at the Macaulay Conception Catholic Church. And burial followed in the Bailey County Cemetery. Graveside service for Sharla K. Bell, 64 of Muleshoe, was held last week as well on Thursday morning, October the 12th at the Muleshoe Memorial Park with Eric Washington of Lubbock officiating. Sharla died Saturday, October the 7th in Lubbock. She was born July the 2nd, 1959 in Lubbock to Billy and Rosemary Stinson Bell. Sharla was a special Olympian in high school. She was an avid Texas Tech football fan and Dallas Cowboys fan. Sharla loved all animals. She attended Green Lawn Church of Christ in Lubbock and is preceded in death by her parents. Sharla survived by two sisters, Linda Washington and her husband Mark of Muleshoe, Leah Bell and John Hathaway of Elmira Heights, New York, a brother, Stephen Bell of Muleshoe, and nieces Tara Jolly and her husband Chris, Amanda Warren, and her husband Russell, Taylor Bell and her nephews Eric Washington and his wife Kira and Cooper Washington and numerous great nieces and great nephews also survive her as well. The family suggests memorials be sent to the Special Olympics, 305 Slayton Road, Lubbock, Texas, 79404. Online condolences can be made at www.ellisfuneralhomes.com. Please keep the family of Sharla K. Bell on your prayer list today. Well, last week, Muleshoe had their uh, seventh game of the season, and it didn't go as the uh, previous six as the Mules fell at home in their first District 2-3A a game. They lost to uh, Bushland. Uh, 56 to 26 last week and of course uh, or the, the week before last <laughs> excuse me last week the friday night we had a bye week but the mules will be back in action uh on the road for the second game of district 23a play at river road this coming friday night uh that is october the 20th Kickoff is at 7 p.m. at River Road at Wildcat Stadium. They're just north of Amarillo, so get out and support the Muleshoe Mules if you can possibly do it. Otherwise, we will have a delayed broadcast on Saturday morning early. We'll have that up on our website, MuleshoeTV.com, and we'll provide updates, quarterly updates, on our Facebook pages, Gil Lamb, Channel 6 Muleshoe, and our Twitter feed, Channel 6 Muleshoe. And and um, while Muleshoe had a bye week, the Bushland Falcons continued their winning ways as they are now 2-0 and in district play. They beat River Road last week 70 to nothing. Uh, that Bushland team is one powerful team. Of course, they're 7 and 1 on the season 2 and 0 in district. Their only loss was at the very first of the season against uh, in game number 2 to a very very uh, always good Canadian team 
They're uh, 3A Division Two, but Canadian is always powerful. And Bushland lost 55 to 35. Otherwise, uh, they've really been Bushland has been killing all of their opponents so far, and they continued last weekend again 70 to nothing over River Road. Dalhart also is 2-0 and in district action as they beat River Road in their first game of district, 42-8. to And then they beat Shallow Water last week, 21-14. Uh, to So Bushland, Dalhart, both are 2-0 and in district action. Muleshoe and Shallow Water are both 0-1. And, 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 and River Road is 0-2. And two, and again, Muleshoe is six and one now overall on the 2023 season. And I imagine they'll get their winning ways back this coming Friday night. Coach Richards and the Mules uh, against the River Road Wildcats up in the Amarillo area. It's just north of Amarillo. And again, we'll be there with a delayed video broadcast on us early Saturday morning. Look for that at MuleshoeTV.com and our broadcast of the Muleshoe Mules football brought to you, the Muleshoe River Road game brought to you by Barrett Potato Farms, Burton Service Center, Shipman's Body Shop and Autoplex, Muleshoe Animal Clinic and Vet Supply, Muleshoe Independent School District, Baylor County Electric, Muleshoe Housing Authority, Leal's Tortilla Factory, Muleshoe Area Medical Center, Mohawk Auto Parts, WTG Fuels, Edward Jones and Stephen DeMitt, McDonald's Restaurant, Five Area Telephone, West Plains Telecommunications, McCormick Seeds, and Lance Insurance and uh, the Mules versus River Road this coming Friday night at 7 p.m. Now the Mules, uh, the JV uh, will be in action along with Junior High Football that's coming Thursday tomorrow on October the 19th. And uh, the seventh grade will kick off at River Road on Thursday at 5 p.m. And then the eighth grade team will play at 6.15. JV will be in action right here at Benny Douglas Stadium. And they kick off at 5 p.m. tomorrow on Thursday, October the 19th. So good luck to all of our uh, junior high JV and varsity football as they are in action this week against River Road. Looking forward, we will continue our football coverage with a live stream next week as the Mules will take on the always tough shallow water team as they will be right here in Muleshoe at Benny Douglas Football Stadium. And uh, that will kick off at 7 p.m. next week on Friday. And then the Mules will end up. That will also be the senior night as that is the last home game. That's October the 27th, Friday uh, against Shallow Water. And then the Mules will end up their regular season on the road way up in the panhandle at Dalhart on November the 3rd. Bailey County Farm Bureau urges you to vote yes on Proposition 1, Family Farms, Family Ranches, Food for Texas, Election Day here in uh, Bailey County is at the Bailey County Coliseum on November the 7th. Early voting is October 23rd through November the 3rd at the Bailey County Courthouse. There's a QR code on their ad on our screen in the Mule Train News. You can get more information from the Farm Bureau. And again, vote yes. The Bailey County Farm Bureau urges you on Proposition 1, Family Farms, Family Ranches, Food for Texas, Election Day, November November the 7th at the Coliseum, early voting October 23rd through November the 3rd at the courthouse, political ad authorized by Texas PAC, right to farm. We'll be back with more Mule Train news in just a few moments, so please stay tuned. This edition of the Mule Train is brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Here in Muleshoe at the original Leal's 1010 West American Boulevard, they have a new bar with a bar menu that includes domestic beers priced very affordably, including Coors for $350, Miller Lite $350, Bud Light $375, Budweiser $375, Michelob Ultra $350, and Shinerbach $375. In their import beer menu, Corona is $4, Tecate is $275, Modelo $4, Modelo is special, $4. 
Dos Equis is four dollars. Pacifico four twenty five. Victoria is four twenty five. Corona Premier is four dollars on their mixed drinks. The Sangria Swirl marked at nine dollars now. Beer Rita's eleven fifty. Sangria eight dollars. Sangria wine eight dollars. Strawberry Margaritas frozen or on the rocks eight fifty. Mango Margarita frozen or on the rocks eight fifty. House Margarita, Frozen or on the Rocks, only $8. And the Micheladas with any beer is eight fifty. That's the brand new bar menu available now when they're open at Leal's Mexican Restaurant, 1010 West American Boulevard. Victor, Debbie, Angelique, and all their employees say come down and try their new bar menu available now at Leal's, the original Leal's right here in Muleshoe, 1010 West American Boulevard. Texas Health Steps is a health care for children through age 20 who have Medicaid and gives your child free medical checkup starting at birth. Texas Health Steps keeps your child healthy and is available through the medical uh, clinic of Muleshoe here at the Muleshoe Area Medical Center. Checkups can help find health problems before they get worse and harder to treat. Keep your little cowboy or cowgirl healthy. If you have Medicaid insurance, call the Medical Clinic of Muleshoe at 806-272-7544 to schedule your child's free medical checkup through the Medical Clinic of Muleshoe at the Muleshoe Area Medical Center. Texas Health Steps, available now. Well, it's time now for our weather forecast. Of course, we're still looking for a sponsor for our weather program. If you'd like to talk to me about sponsoring it, call my cell at 806-566-5881. Well, we have had our first freeze of the season here in Muleshoe. Our average first freeze is uh, uh, usually around Oct- October the 21st but we froze much earlier this year as we had our first freeze Saturday morning early on October the 14th that morning we got down to 31 degrees here at the National Weather Service Station at Channel 6 then on Sunday October the 15th the next morning we got down even lower down to 29 degrees then Monday morning again one more time October the 16th we had our third freeze as we hit 32 degrees that Monday morning and uh, that's the last freeze we've had and they were all light uh, all of my uh, porch plants all survived and along with all the potted plants in the backyard so they're all doing well so not a hard free- freeze yet and we're supposed to get uh, warm a little bit warmer than we've been the last few days coming up for the next few days sunny high near 79 degrees today for wednesday in meal shoe north northeast winds around 20 miles per hour clear tonight low around 43 so if that's our low it will be much warmer as this morning uh overnight uh, our low was 37 degrees this morning and um it the high yesterday was 84 so a little bit cooler during the day but warmer at night for today thursday sunny high near 80 80, or excuse me thursday sunny high near 80 northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming west southwest in the afternoon mostly clear thursday night low around 46 friday Sunny high near 85 degrees, west-northwest winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming south-southwest in the afternoon hours. Looking at Friday night, partly cloudy, low around 52, so much, much warmer. South wind around 10 miles per hour Friday night. If you're on the road at River Road, their forecast calls for Thursday, sunny, high near 84, west-northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear Thursday night, low around 50, northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming west-southwest after midnight. Then on Friday for the varsity football game up at River Road, sunny, high near 87 degrees, west-northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming south in the afternoon. Friday night, mostly clear, low around 55, south winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusts as high as 20 miles per hour Friday night up in the Amarillo area. Back to Muleshoe, looking at the weekend, mostly sunny, 
high near 85. South, southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Saturday night, looking at a partly cloudy evening with a low around 51 south winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Sunny on Sunday, high near 85 degrees south, southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then Sunday night, mostly clear, low around 51. Monday, high near 82 degrees. Monday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy, low around 55 Tuesday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly sunny, high near 73. So keep your fingers crossed. We are extremely dry here in the Mealshire area as we're only around 10 inches of rain so far in the 2023 season. So it'd be nice to get some rain uh, as we have chances on Monday night and Tuesday looking at our seven-day forecast rolling into next week. Of course, as we go here and get farther into fall and into the winter months, it gets very lean precipitation-wise as our own, our average rain for each one of those months is very, very small. So it'd be nice to get some rain here before we get too deep into the fall and winter. Again, we need a sponsor for our weather program. If you'd like to sponsor it, you can call my cell, 806-566-5881. Well, the Bailey County Senior Center has a couple fun events that are on the horizon. Join them at the Senior Center, 319 South Main Street, for the holiday market, the Mistletoe and the Shoe event. The second annual, I believe it will be Saturday, October the 28th from 10 a.m. till 3.30 that day with uh, boutiques, handcrafted gifts, baked goods, and much, much more. That's mistletoe in the shoe. We'll be at the Senior Center, Main and Avenue D for their holiday market, mistletoe in the shoe, 319 South Main Street, Saturday, October the 28th, 10 a.m. till 3.30 with handcrafted gifts, boutiques, baked goods, and much, much more. That's Mistletoe in the Shoe at the Senior Center on Saturday, October the 28th. Also, the Senior Center is preparing for their annual Thanksgiving dinner. It will be Thursday, November the 2nd at 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Senior Center, Main and Avenue D, the good old-fashioned home-cooked Thanksgiving meal. Get it for $12. Takeouts and delivery are available. If you want a delivery, please call 806-272-4969. The annual Thanksgiving dinner at the Senior Center will be Thursday, November the 2nd, 11 a.m. till 2 p.m., with on a good old-fashioned home-cooked Thanksgiving meal with all the trimmings, $12, takeouts and delivery available. Call today if you want a delivery, 806-272-4969. And the sponsor of the week at the Senior Center is the Scott Miller family. This is Ann Johnson riding. Muleshoe Senior C Citizen Center wants to thank Scott and Christy Miller and their daughters Avery and Presley for their sponsorship of the center this week. The sponsors are very important to us at the Senior Center. Muleshoe is home to the Millers. They have many fond memories of living here. They are of home and family. In an interview that Ann did with Scott, he shared the people that were great influences in his life. His mother, Pam, according to Scott, taught the family to live life to the fullest. One of the messages he received on a regular basis from his dad, Mike Miller, was, let's go, we're burning daylight. These important lessons played a major part in Scott and Christy Miller's life and in their business dealings as well, along with their church life. They are active in their church at the First Baptist Church, and they give credit and thanks to their Lord Jesus Christ. Scott and Chrissy are both very active in the community as well. Scott and his family are in the farming business, have an insurance agency, and are investors in many interesting ventures. For fun, the family shares time away playing golf, snow skiing, enjoying lake life, and riding motorcycles. In asking Scott of memories growing up in Milshew, he remembers and loved the celebrations on the 4th of July. Milshew always had fun time celebrating with parades and games. He remembers that he loved to go to the drive-in theater that was here for many years. Scott is proudest of his family, Christy, his wife, his two daughters, Avery and Presley. Scott Miller and his family are an asset to our community in every sense of the word. Thank you again to Scott, Christy, Avery, and Presley Miller for their generous support to the Bailey County Senior 
Senior Center, and you can see Scott and Christy and their daughters pictured on our screen here in the Mule Train News, along with on the front page of our website, MuleshoeTV.com. Again, the Scott Miller family is the sponsor of the week at the Bailey County Senior Center. They serve lunch every day at the Senior Center. And today, on Wednesday, October the 18th, they'll be serving chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, country gravy, stewed okra, seasoned corn, and a pumpkin square tomorrow on Thursday, October 19th, Salisbury steak with mushroom sauce, mashed potatoes, spinach, pea salad, whole wheat dinner roll, and a fruit cocktail on Friday, October 20th. At lunch at the Senior Center, fish or chicken strips, barracho beans, green peas, Toss vegetable salad, low-cal fridge dressing, whole wheat roll, tropical fruit mix. Then on Monday next week, October 23rd, cube steak, roasted ranch potatoes, sliced carrots, toss vegetable salad, low-cal fridge dressing, cornbread, apricot halves. On Tuesday, October 24th, sweet and sour pork, fried rice, mixed vegetables, toss salad with dressing, and a fruit parfait. That's all being served for lunch this week at the Senior Center. They start around 11.30 each morning. Well, the Muleshoe Chamber of Commerce, along with the Muleshoe Heritage Center, will sponsor their Howl at the Mule event that will be on the west edge of Muleshoe along the American Boulevard right there north at the Muleshoe Heritage Center. And it will be Sunday, October the 29th, at 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., they'll have food trucks there, activities for the whole family, music, fictional haunted tours of the grounds there at the center. And it's a great opportunity to show off the Heritage Foundation and the Chamber of Commerce. Again, mark it on your calendar. Howl at the Mule will be at the Muleshoe Heritage Center there on the west edge of town, north of the American Boulevard, Sunday, October 29th, 5.30 p.m., to 8.30 p.m. that evening, again with food trucks, activities for the whole family, music, and fictional haunted tours of some of the buildings there at the Muleshoe Heritage Center. Again, Sunday, October 29th, 5.30 until 8.30 p.m. Well, of course, join us every Sunday for the live stream from the First Baptist Church that begins at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. This Sunday, Stacy uh, will be taking a break, and Richard Laverty will be uh, giving the message this coming Sunday morning at the First Baptist Church, Lessons from the Last Supper from John 13 with, again, Richard Laverty. The full service, though, will start at 11 a.m. at the uh, on from the First Baptist Church, that live stream on the front page of our website, MuleshoeTV.com. Later on every Sunday, we will have the Calvary Baptist uh, full service and the message by Brother Jeff Kaufman, and then the Muleshoe Methodist service and their full service from every Sunday morning with their uh, message being brought by their minister, David Maccabee. We've been having a couple of technical issues with the Methodist Church, but hopefully we'll get all of that worked out and um, have that for you available. MuleshoeTV.com. Click on the First Baptist tab, top left. Next to it is Muleshoe Methodist, and then the Calvary Baptist tab. Get all the programs from them. You can get that on demand anytime you want to watch it, free of charge on our website. Again, MuleshoeTV.com. The St. Anne's Catholic Church in Bovina is having their annual Turkey dinner Sunday, November the 5th at St. Anne's Catholic Church in Bovina from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's Texas time Sunday, November the 5th at the St. Anne's Parish Hall on 3rd Street in Bovina. They'll be serving turkey and dressing, cream potatoes and gravy, green beans, homemade bread, cranberry sauce, desserts, tea, and coffee. It's $15 donation for adults, $6 for children under 6. Takeout plates will be available at no additional charge and of course if you've never gone over there to eat with them at St. Anne's for their turkey dinner it is homemade and it's very delicious that meal also a quilt made by the society there at St. Anne's will be raffled off during the dinner and that is according to Joanne McDonald their advertising chair again their annual 
Turkey dinner will be Sunday, November the 5th, 11.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. That's Texas time at St. Anne's Parish Hall on 3rd Street in Bovina. Don't forget the Mule Shoe Meals on Wheels program is always looking for volunteers. Less than one hour a day, once a month, can help out drastically with the Meals on Wheels and their delivery needs. Volunteers are always needed. Get a friend or coworker, have an hour of fulfilling fun delivering meals for Mule Shoe Meals on Wheels program if you would like to volunteer. Talk with uh, Judy Kaufman. She's the Bailey County Office of the Aging Director that is in charge of the Mills on Wheels program. She's in the uh, courthouse, and her office can be found by going in the, that south door, and she's the first office right there on your left, or you can call Judy at 806 272 36 Four seven volunteer now for the Mule Shoe Meals on Wheels program. Well, on your prayer list today, please remember Roy Angel Dua, also Robert Johnson, Joy Priest, also Aaron Black and Joe Bledsoe, Marie Brown, Richard Kaufman, Dolores Harvey, Bernie Martz. Eddie Morris needs to be on your prayer list today. Joe Phelps, Terry Simmons, Holly Snell, Nance Wallace, Nancy Wallace, excuse me, Cliff Black and Rowena Myers, Terry Byers and Suzanne Nichols needs to be on your prayer list as well, along with Melba King and Wanda Schaefer, Becky Conklin, Gabby Stone, Burden and Larry Combs, Tyrone Clements, John Blackwell, Olivia Barrera, Marjorie Morgan, Ed and Carol Cox down in the Houston area. Keep them always on your prayer list today. Remember, always mom on your prayer list today. She's suffering with dementia and is under hospice care here at the house. Remember Cleta Robertson, Jerry Bruton, Carrie and Pat Moore at the Parkview. Daryl Embry needs to be on your prayer list today. Remember the family and friends of those uh, grieving the recent loss of a loved one, like the family of Norris Conklin, the family of Marcos Arizola Costilla. Remember on your prayer list the family of Sharla K. Bell, the family of Bruce Crabtree, Please remember the family of Jose Luis Garcia Jr., the family of Manuela Ama Martinez, and the family of Jerry Mack Hall. Well, it's just about time for us to go on this edition of the Mule Train News, brought to you today by Liao's Mexican Restaurant. You can hear our latest Mule Train News programs along with all of our older archives, archived ones back to nearly 10 years ago. Free of charge on demand on our website, MuleShoeTV.com. Click on the Mule Train News link at the top center of the page. The Sound of Texas is brought to you here on MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe at 610 East American Boulevard as well as in Morton at 1744 State Highway 114. They're celebrating rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric since 1939. They're owned by the members that they serve. Call 806-272-4504. Check them out online at BCEC. COOP.com, the board of directors, the members, the employees, the manager, CEO, David Markle, all hope you enjoy this Sound of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. Thank you. 
taken up over the rides. And right now, it's pretty much an ass if you take off the hot chair and, and put the wax finish on them, which is wax and minty oil, and try to get some progression on and try to come up with it. He was born and raised from New York, Long Island. Went up to school in Connecticut. I knew I wanted to leave Long Island. It's the proudest of us. Went up to Connecticut and got a degree in biology. Going to do school, I wanted to ask for three years. We kind of wanted to travel at that time, just to get a college degree. But so, yeah, pretty broke, so you know, so I was a kind of like the way to travel and meet people and see what's going on in other parts of the world. And so we took off. And I went in the first night of the day, two school, a couple of months, six years, six years. So he did fish farming in Oklahoma, California, and Mexico. His Mexico operation was a big one with 70 employees. I like the aspect of it, but I couldn't work with my hands anymore and realized that that wasn't just cutting it. I just wasn't happy. I was making lots of money, but I just wasn't happy. So I left to Mexico and came up here and decided I didn't want to have any employees anymore and didn't want to work with my hands. And that's what I do. There can't be another trade on the face of the earth that uses more different tools than a blacksmith. The thing that I want to remember a lot was it was very time consuming. I mean, one of the reasons there's not any black stuff in the country anymore is just because it's uneconomical other than the art field where people just don't have to go on the table anymore. Don McKellar's party has been working with metal in the field. I'm Tommy Wichita, and I'm a customer.